But what I wanna share is that the results are actually different based on just walking or light cardio, which actually does lower blood sugar levels. So keep in mind the type of exercise matters. They're both fantastic. I believe that we need both, but we wanna be careful as to how we qualify that because it's not all exercise that may increase blood sugar. Hey everybody, glad to have you back here today on the Cabral Concept Podcast. This is episode 2722. For all the show notes, the research links, and much more, check out stephencabral.com 2722. Let's dive into today's show. We're going to be talking about how high-intensity interval training can actually have a different effect on the body, believe it or not, even if it's the same exact workout, if you do it in the morning, right after breakfast, or about an hour after breakfast, versus mid-afternoon. So let's go through what the research shared on that and how you could potentially use this to your advantage. All right, I'm gonna give you the exact research study right now. It's called Afternoon Exercise is More Efficacious Than Morning Exercise at, improve, at Improving Blood Glucose Levels in Individuals with Type 2 Diabetes, a Randomized Crossover Trial. Um, why I wanted to share this with you here today is that I know it's been talked about a bit, uh, and so I wanted to give a little bit of clarity around it, because how this study is titled is a bit misleading, because there's a difference between types of exercise. So for example, this is what's called high intensity interval training. If you're not familiar with that, I've got lots of podcasts on this, but this is basically pushing your heart rate, pushing your body, whether it's um, sprinting on an exercise bike, uh, running quickly, fast, or working out with weights at a high intensity, but you're getting your heart rate above 80% of your max VO2. And that basically just means like on a rate of perceived exertion, um, you cannot have a normal conversation or really string together more than a sentence uh, before having to catch your breath, right? So you can't talk to the person next to you cycling or running or exercising and be able to carry on a conversation. It's actually going at almost all out pace, right? So you can't really talk. All right. So that's the intensity that they went through. Now, that's one type of exercise, right? Like that's high intensity. But there is actually a different type of exercise, which is more aerobic based, so not anaerobic, which is basically using more glucose or carbohydrates as a fuel system versus using maybe more oxygen, fatty acids, et cetera. And that is more aerobic based. I've gone through this in detail before, so I'm not gonna necessarily go too deep on the forms of exercise. Happy to provide a lot of free podcasts on that today at episode 2722. But what I want to share is that the results are actually different based on just walking or light cardio, which actually does lower blood sugar levels. So keep in mind the type of exercise matters. They're both fantastic. I believe that we need both, but we want to be careful as to how we qualify that because it's not all exercise that may increase blood sugar. All right. So what did the study share with you? It's actually, it's a fascinating study to read. If you like reading research, I'm going to link it up here for you today because this was um, a very approachable study in terms of uh, reading and science behind it. I actually have, I have the, you know what? I can actually give you the larger study that was done. I have a lot more um, data on that. So I'd love to be able to share that with you because it's just, I think it's a little bit more interesting as well to go deeper. So here's what they found though. I'm going to give you the summary. And again, you can check it out if you'd like. This was a small study. So it should be done in a larger population. Yes, I agree, but it was very well done. So that's the thing. Even though it was a small study, they told you exactly uh, who the participants were, how many completed the study, and it, and it was done in a very uh, precise manner. So here's what they did. They used men with type 2 diabetes, okay? So they did have type 2 diabetes. They already had blood sugar issues. However, it was being managed with uh, metformin and, uh, and with one specific type of diet, okay? So here's what they found. They found that doing, this was the exercise, a seven-minute warm-up, followed by a one-minute sprint plus one minute off 
repeated six times. So that's basically, that's their high intensity interval training workout. You may not seem like a lot, right? Like, oh, well, it's only six sprints, right? But keep in mind, an all out one minute sprint is actually hard work on the body. That, I mean, think about it. A Tabata is eight 20 second sprints. I know it's only 10 seconds of recovery, but you're talking about a, a four minute workout, right? So a 12 minute workout, where it's six of those as one minute sprints. I don't know if you've ever tried to do an all out one minute sprint, it's challenging, right? So that's a workout. So it's 12 minutes plus seven, 19 minutes total was their workout. Seven minute warm up, six sprints. Again, if you're looking to repeat this yourself or even try it out, which again, you could, I'm not giving you any medical advice here, of course, of anything, anything like that, medical treatment plans, but they did this work at it two times during the day. So they had one group. Now both groups got to do this. That's why it's, it was a great study. So one group, did this one hour after breakfast. It was a light breakfast, okay? And it was done one hour later. And then the other group did it three hours after lunch. And the lunch, I'm telling, I mean, not necessarily a health lunch. It was just, but they had the same thing each time. So that's how they kept it it standardized. It was basically a sandwich and juice. Uh, That was their lunch. So here's what they found though. By doing these sprints one hour after breakfast, it actually raised glucose levels. It raised blood sugar levels by about six or seven points, like six or seven millimoles, which is very interesting, right? But if they did it mid-afternoon, it actually lowered their glucose levels. So the morning workout raised blood sugar, and the afternoon workout three hours after their lunch lowered their glucose levels. So according to this study, doing high-intensity interval training in the morning may elevate blood sugar levels. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper on that in just a second. And doing an afternoon workout may, and at least in this study, lowered blood sugar levels. How do they know it wasn't just the people that did the morning versus the afternoon? Well, again, it it was a well done study. They had the group after, I believe it was two weeks, do what's called a two week washout. So they didn't exercise, they didn't follow that specific regimen for that. And then they took the afternoon group and they moved them in the morning, same diet. They took the morning group and then they moved in the afternoon. And so they got those averages and it showed the same in each group. So that's the nice thing about it. It wasn't just the individual. They, yes, they had about a dozen individuals, not a lot. I understand that. And only 10 actually finished all of the different workouts. Uh, but at least we have the semblance of a well-controlled study that we could repeat at a larger scale. Now, here's the nice thing. You can do this on your own. That that is the amazing thing about the time we live right now is that you can run this own clinical trial yourself. You can just use a continuous glucose monitor, which is exactly what these participants did, and you'll be able to see what affects your blood sugar in terms of your workouts. Because I've talked about this for years now, and the only reason I know this is simply because I worked with diabetics, type two diabetics, and general population on what elevated Uh, their blood sugar levels and what lowered it. And what I can tell you for sure is that what helped the most was actually aerobic-based cardio in terms of lowering glucose. And I found that myself, a brisk walk or going out for a jog or a bike lowers blood sugar levels, whereas something more intense, and I'm gonna give my theory as to why this may be, because the the study didn't say why this happened. They just told you that it did happen. And I can absolutely share with you that when my type two diabetic clients did a boot camp or a high intensity interval training workout, it usually elevated their blood sugar levels. Now, the interesting thing is I didn't have many people doing it mid morning, because these were people typically working between nine and five, but they would do it at 7 a.m. or they would do it around 8 p.m., 7 p.m. at night. Neither one, in terms of high intensity for the type two diabetics I work for, did a great job. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do high intensity interval training. I think there's a time and place. But what did work for them, if we were just looking at just glucose levels alone, was more of the aerobic-based cardio. I found that fascinating because that wasn't necessarily what I would have thought coming out of the gates. Now, here are some of my theories, uh, at least one of which are backed up at least by an assumption by one of the authors of the study. So it's here's what I wanna share with you. You can drink black coffee with no carbs or anything like that in the morning and it can spike glucose levels. I have a whole podcast on will coffee spike your glucose levels. Again, you'll only know by using a glucose monitor or glucometer, a very inexpensive one, or the ones that I use with my clients, uh, myself and in my practice, 
and I can link that up for you today. So that's at stephencabral.com slash 2722. By the way, I'm always looking to get you the least expensive and absolute best continuous glucose monitors right now. Uh, as of the recording of this show, it'll change in a year or two from now, but the Freestyle Libra 3 is the one that I'm currently using. I'll always give you the most current recommendation, and that will be at stephencabral.com slash resources. But link, uh, head on over to today's show. That's just 2722. And I'll I'll just share with you the one that I use. Now, you don't have to use that, of course. You can use a $20 one from Amazon uh, or from your local uh, pharmacy, and you can get a glucometer and do that as well. That's okay. That works. So here's what I want to share with you, though. Um, Drinking coffee early in the morning, doing a cold plunge early in the morning, doing sprints early in the morning can further spike cortisol levels and norepinephrine. We, we know that it does that, right? I mean, that's one of the ways cold plunges work, right? For better or for worse, it spikes norepinephrine. Uh, High-intensity interval training spikes norepinephrine, right? That's a, a stress hormone or a stress neurotransmitter that gets the heart rate going, gets you into that fight or flight, right? And there's pros and there's cons to that, right? For more of the endomorphic, bo- endomorphic body type, they could greatly, greatly, Uh, do well with that. The Vata body type, not so much, right? The ectomorph, that would not be very good for them. So that's why, you know, we can personalize things based on the individual. It's not an all-for-one based approach. So it's my opinion that this could further spike uh, cortisol levels. And if you spike cortisol levels, you can expect, for the most part, blood sugar levels to spike as well because cortisol is a glucocorticoid, which means its main job is to tell the liver, for the most part, to dump more uh, sugar, glycogen, or convert more uh, glycogen to glucose back into the bloodstream. The other could be that this was an aside on the study. They didn't talk too much about it, but both high-intensity interval training sessions elevated TSH. So it's TSH is thyroid-stimulating hormone. And again, if if you look at the physiology of the body, in the short term when you spike cortisol, your body's going to want to rev up metabolism, and that will typically ask, your body will be asking for more thyroid. So that, that's not abnormal to me. Chronic stress in the long run uh, depletes T4, T3, at least the conversion to that. So that was interesting as well. And again, I think that those two hormones are pretty much tied together. The neurotransmitters I've, I've talked about a bit as well. But again, when you're spiking stress neurotransmitters, uh, for the most part, it's norepinephrine that we're talking about. That can be an issue. And then I think the study raised an interesting point. Could high-intensity interval training cause faster gastric emptying? And all that means is, Could high-intensity interval training, like for example, they were cycling, they were sprinting on a bike for one minute, could that cause the body to, at a much faster rate, digest or at least empty the contents from the stomach into the small intestine, the duodenum, to then be faster absorbed for fuel for the body, such as carbohydrates or glucose, to then be used for this fight or flight or this you know extra uh, need for glycogen or what's called you know faster glycolysis from exercise in the body from anaerobic workouts. And I think that maybe that's a possibility as well. Um, you'd actually have to look at the the gastric emptying in the stomach, but that's that's worth noting. It really is. I would love to see one additional group where you did a fasted um, workout, hit in the morning, did that raise or elevate blood sugar with no food in your stomach, then the one hour after breakfast, and then the mid-afternoon, which was the three hours after lunch. Because it's not a one-for-one when you're doing it uh, three hours away from a meal versus just one hour away from a meal. And then it also matters what that meal is. The more fiber, the more protein, well, it's going to be slower digesting, right? So I think all of that matters. What I do know is that this was a well-done study. If you were to look at this specifically and you wanted to follow this at face value, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that because I actually recommend it to my weight loss clients and to my clients that are looking at uh, body transformation, improving their glucose, is actually to do AM fasted cardio. So this is basically when you go for a walk uh, or go for a brisk walk, you go a light jog and cycling, whatever you want it to be, and that's on an empty stomach and you're still in a fasted state. So these are, again, I'm not giving you medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis, but for 
clients that I work with and they have elevated blood sugar levels, like above 100 for us when you wake up in the morning, okay, we want to bring that down. And high intensity interval training, I have not seen to be a good way to actually lower that. I've actually seen that can increase hunger, not right away, but like an hour or two later. Um, so I like to just ease into the day, get more aerobic based, and then we can break our fast about an hour or so after that. And then I do like, if, again, if possible, so again, could you walk in the morning? I don't know, because I don't know your schedule, right? But the thing is, like, if we can wake up a little bit earlier, we can do these things just for 30 minutes or so. And then in mid-afternoon, that is a lot of times a great time to be able to get in a workout. I know it's not going to work for everyone, so I can't like say you have to do this. And if you're a healthy individual, none of this may matter. That's the truth. And you get in a workout when you can get in a workout because obviously it's better to work out than not to uh, work out. And I think we can just tweak the diet a bit in order to help with those glucose levels too. So hopefully this was helpful. The three big takeaways from today, the actual research link. I'm going to try to give you the full research link so you can actually look at the entire article um, as well as the continuous glucose monitor that I like. We'll be at stephencabral.com slash 2722. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day. I'll talk with you soon. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.